supposed to do. They took a team that they were better than and dominated them and uh, had a slow start, so it looked like a hangover from the last two weeks, which is what we, we needed to overcome and, and uh, dominated uh, from the second uh, quarter really through uh, the rest of the game. Uh, missed a couple opportunities offensively, had a couple of holding penalties, uh, but got to play everybody uh, from latter part of the third quarter till the end of the game. I'm really proud of Connor that he got to play in a regular offensive setting where he could make some plays and, and do some things. Proud of Omarion uh, that he uh, got 1,000 yards this early in the season. That's pretty cool. And he protects the ball so much. Uh, Drake um, just kept being Drake. Um, Chris Culliver, fun for him to get a, a touchdown pass at the end because he needed that. And uh, you can see he's fast and, and going to be a really good player. Um, and, and really good to get a lot of the, the defensive guys some rest, but also play a lot of other defensive guys. Thought the kicking game was good as well, except for the one we screwed up at halftime. And uh, that was unbelievable that uh, kids just ran out on the field by themselves. I don't know. We should have had somebody standing there saying, no, wait, because we were going to spike the ball. And I mean, they're gone. And then we can't find Drake, and we don't have a timeout. And Drake was trying to get back out there and spike it even with a field goal team out there. But that was just completely botched, so we, we messed it up. Um, it'll help us. It'll definitely help us the last three weeks because somebody will be standing in front of them saying, don't go. We thought they would wait till we told them that they were excited. Questions? Now that this game is behind you, given the last couple of weeks, did it come at a good time? Did you need this kind of game and this kind of performance? Yeah, I, I can see why Larry did this now. Um, you know, most of the time, I think it was before the NC State game, but. Uh, uh, having an open date or a game where you're better than the other team, but you still have to play. Uh, I like their quarterback. He's really uh, accurate. They've got a couple of really good pa uh, receivers. Uh, running back, uh, number one, was a good player. Um, they played hard on defense, so um, I, I thought it was, a, it was a perfect time and the perfect game for us at this time. Michael, you talked about Chris Culver getting that touchdown at the end. Um, kind of behind the scenes, like what are some of the things that he's been able to do uh, to kind of, you know, uh, you know, make his plays, I guess, in the, in the, in the depth chart? Yeah, uh, well, that, that brings up Tez. So happy that Tez could get back. He practiced a little bit this week. Uh, he was a little bit sore. Uh, so we didn't know until pregame today whether he was going to play or not. And Chris was going to have to step up and take a bigger role in the game if he didn't. So that's the other reason we needed Chris out there more today uh, so he can help out if, if somebody gets hurt. Um, and you, you don't want, uh, Chris has been on all the kick teams, so I think he hasn't reached, he, he's already passed the red shirt. So you've got guys, I think Christian Hamilton, we were holding because he can still red shirt. And you can play in four games and still play in the bowl game. So we're having to look at right now who can red shirt, who's not, uh, who's already lost their ability to redshirt, and they need to play more. So we're working on all that at this time. But really proud of Chris. Chris, is, he's got length, he's got speed, he's tough, he loves to play. Uh, he just has to learn more about what we're doing. But he's, uh, he, he's got a chance to be really special in the future. Following up on that just real quick, since you brought up Tez, uh, when did you guys kind of feel that he'd be good to go for today? Uh, about 11.58. <laughs> we actually watched him in pregame. And, and we said, if, if, if he said he was sore, we weren't going to play him at, at all. But we also thought he needed to play because he didn't need to have the tough hit at, at Tech and then play against Duke without having some balls thrown in, in a live setting. So we were, uh, he's tough. He's a tough young man and walked out there. And not only did he play, he played really good. I was going to ask you about Tez. Can you take yourself from where we were last week down there in Atlanta? You guys are praying over him on the field to he's getting in the end zone twice today just I mean for you and maybe this team emotionally to see him bounce back in this way I mean it looked like maybe season ending yeah Adam it's why I love these kids so much they work so hard and they're tough and they, they get hit they get beaten up every day they got school they got girlfriend got girlfriend issues they got class they got flunk a test you, you you've got uh, uh, it, it's uh, Nobody really understands how hard these guys work and how special they are and how tough they are. And um, for Tez to want to get back out there, he could have very well. Everybody's talking about NIL and all this selfishness. We, we don't have that. Tez could have very well said, I'm just going to go work with the scouts and I'm through. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to hurt my draft status. 
it was fighting to get back and fighting to get back to play in a game he knew we were going to win anyway uh, because he wanted to get back out there and, and help his team. So uh, that's the kind of kids these are. It's uh, Every time you, you want to get down over something, hang out with them. And, and to watch them, there's nothing better on the sideline than the players watching younger players or inexperienced players get to play. That's the, it's, it's like a walk-on getting a scholarship. They are so happy when somebody makes a play. And, and that's the challenge I had for them, get the game over early enough that your buddies get to play. It's on you, man. It's not on us. Uh, and they were able to do that. Do you really think you would have said he was sore? <laughs> when you told him he was sore, do you think he wanted to play? Like well, uh, one of the things was lower body so you could see if he could run well enough or not. So that was, uh, I think we would have known uh, but it's, it's amazing he didn't have anything in here. And, and that's what we were so worried about. One thing about hits too, Drake was pretty hard to get the third quarter to 35-7. Those are the kind of things you worry about in a game like this. You do. But, but you know what? You've got to play, and you've got to get him to play some. And we were having him in there for one more series and just trying to get him uh, some work with the, with the guys. And uh, they didn't have the ball the first half at all. They had it, what, 18 minutes, 12? They didn't have it much. Anyway, they had it about twice as much as we did. So we're trying to get him some plays. Same thing with Omarion. I let him stay in one play, and if we'd gotten hurt, we'd all been screaming, and that would have been the, that'd been all you'd be talking about is Drake and Omarion. Uh, but, uh, in fact, I think it was Freddie. Somebody yelled, what's Omarion doing in there? And I said, I put him in there. So for, for one more play, and now I'm getting him out because I, I wanted him to, to be out there. Uh, while we still had the better offensive lineman out there, more experienced. Did you, get your, did you get your mojo back today, or is it kind of hard to tell in a game like this against an opponent? I, I think we did. Game? I thought they had fun. They, they got their confidence back. The defense really played well for three, three quarters, and uh, I was more worried about the Campbell offense than I was their defense. I thought we'd move the ball, but their offense has got some players. And you, you complete 74% against air. And you're pretty good. He's number two in the country in the FBS, and, and they've done a good job. He's well coached, and he came out hot. And this is the most exciting game in their history, and not for us. Uh, and that's what you worry about in these games. Uh, but, but he came out hot and did a good job. And uh, They caught us on a wheel route early and on a, a third and long, uh, where we got a call in late. It's our fault, not the kids' fault. Um, I, I was really proud of the defense for stepping up like they did. The offense is the offense. They, they're pretty much the same every week. With Amari coming into the year, it seemed like that room was pretty crowded. Maybe people thought him and British would be splitting snaps. Like you mentioned, it surpasses 1,000 yards just, you know, nine games into this year. Could you foresee something like this coming into the year with Amari? And, and now that it's happened, how has it kind of taken this offense to another level? Yeah, he is uh, – uh, I, I did see that. I, I thought it would happen last year. And, and he uh, sprained an ankle last year, and he, he, uh, we weren't as consistent up front. Our running game was different than it is right now. This is the perfect running game for him. And he's developed confidence and patience, and he's, he's got the rare combination of, of power and speed. And now in the, uh, one of the latter drives, he picked up a, on pass protection, he picked up a blitzing linebacker. So he's, he's the whole package right now. Uh, he's one of the reasons we're so good on offense. Do you think follow up on that, it seemed like last year ball security was kind of an issue with him. It kind of resulted to him getting pinched there, kind of there in the year. Through this year, no fumbles. I think that's the most in the country in terms of rushes without a fumble. What steps has he taken in that area this offseason and into this year? I, I think uh, Larry Porter is one of the best running back coaches in the country. I've been with him twice now. I was with him at Texas and, and now back here. Um, and a lot of that's back to strength and confidence. If you're not confident, you're unsure with the ball in your hands and, and you're sloppy with it, uh, just like he dropped it in the ACC championship game at the 24. He and Drake on a mesh. And, and uh, right now, he and Drake have it down, and they're going, and they're confident. And uh, confidence is a, uh, um, it, it's an unbelievable boost for people. And lack of confidence is a killer. In, in anything you do, and, and especially with young people and coaches uh, in football. I mean, if you don't have confidence, people are going to eat you up, and they're going to see it. You better walk up with uh, um, good body language. You better look people in the eye. You better reach the hand out, and you better shake it, and you better be strong with your answers. And if not, people will absolutely eat you up. And, and that's, that, that's what we're trying to teach these young guys. And, 
and no better teacher than, than especially after you get beat, when some people are, are rude to you and about you, and you have to stand up and be strong at a very young age, and that's, a, that's what you learn from losing. Mac, do you think a lot of Omarion's growth this season is attributable to British choosing to come back for another year, so to sort of be the leader in that room? Yes, British is uh, one of the best people I've ever been around, uh, and he's a great teacher. And Omarion, as he gains confidence, he would tell you, he looks at British for everything he does. And, and there's no selfishness in the room. British will go in and out any time he wants to, and, and uh, British has really helped us this year as well. Do you think Omarion's ready to sort of be that, be the next British, you know, once British leaves and he'll be the leader? Uh, uh, next, next I, I do. It'll be interesting in that room because George Petaway's asked a red shirt. Uh, Elijah Green's asked a red shirt. We had to play a, uh, Caleb Hood had an upper body injury today where he couldn't play. Um, so we, we played his younger brother, who's a walk-on, uh, and then Jordan Louis got in for a run. Um, so we, we went from overloaded in that room to being thin. And that's what happens now when young guys decide that they, they want a red shirt. Mike, what did you, 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 you see out of Connor Harold today? I was really pleased with Connor. We, we told him, I thought he was uptight. He missed a read the first time he went out there. And I told Chip, we have got to play him like we're playing him in a game. He's one play away from coming in. And, and we've got to keep him out there. And we got, we got to, um, we've got to call the plays we would call when he's in the game, period, and run the offense. And, and uh, sometimes I haven't done that in the past, and it's not been smart. Uh, it's been nice, uh, but it's not my job. My job is to get the next guy ready to play, and that's what we said today. Uh, but he made a great read on the zone read, and he's real fast. I mean, he, he's obviously real fast. I mean, everybody saw that, and we've seen that. Uh, but he, he made a tremendous throw to Chris Culliver. And Chris actually caught it over the outside shoulder, so it was a tremendous play. But that should give Connor the confidence that he needs because he hadn't been out there in that setting, and there's no better setting um, to, to gain confidence than in a game like that where you're going to win, uh, but you need to go out there and play, and now you know that you can. Mac, you took me inside the film room and practiced defensively this week. What was said? Who stood up after Georgia Tech and coming into this game this week? Yeah, the, the biggest thing is you to win college football games, you got to stop the run and run the damn ball. I mean, that's why we got a hat that says run the damn ball. Um, and that doesn't change. And even when Georgia Tech threw for so many yards the first half, if we had stopped their run the second half, we would have still won the game. We have got to stop the run. And we have got to run the ball. It's, you have a tendency today to just let Drake go crazy and get the score out of hand. And you don't want Omar to get beaten up. But that's not who we are. So you have to run the ball and stop the run. And, and I've, I've told, told uh, Coach Chiswick, if you have to put all 11 at the line of scrimmage and they throw it over our head for a touchdown, I'm okay with that. But I don't want them being able to run it every time and then throw it over our head too. you got to stop something. So we did that today in, in the latter three quarters. How about you use this game as a reset defensively going into that last stretch in Duke, NC State, Clemson? Well, the, the biggest thing is that you, um, you can show them uh, where it didn't work last week because of this, this, and this, and it did. And, and uh, Campbell tried to do exactly what Georgia Tech did. They tried to go uh, a tempo, spread you out, and run downhill And um, uh, at first. Kind of got us there in the first drive, and then after that we settled down. So that should really help us as we prepare for Duke this week. Going back to uh, Connor, I know that he'd been seeking consistency previously. Can you take us back to toward the end of camp in August to now. Has he found that consistency? Are you seeing what you want to see from him every week in practice? Yes, we, we've seen two really good weeks of practice. And I do think, and it's, it's kind of weird, but, but he's different than Drake. So what we've got to do is, is we continue to work to find what is his offense. And then you've got to be able to work, since he is different than Drake, his offense with the blue offensive lineman. And it's a different set of plays than it is with Drake. So that's what we've, uh, we just keep working on to try to make sure that we get him ready when we need him uh, and, and if we need him in a game. What are some of those differences that you see kind of the offense? Drake is a more consistent thrower. And Connor's a lot faster. And I, I don't want to hurt Drake's feelings, but Drake does not want to race Connor. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. You can keep going. If you want no, to. I'm good. 
Why didn't Drake just stay out there and spike the ball at the end of the first half? Like, how did he end up on the sideline? I don't have any idea. I got to find out. I don't know if somebody yelled at Toro. Toro is the word to get them all out there. I didn't hear it. No coach heard it. I was standing right next to Larry Porter. He's the one that would call it. I don't have any idea. I think what Drake did when he saw him running out, because when the clock starts, we had nine, nine seconds. Drake's really smart. So when he saw them running out, he said, oh, they've called Toro Toro from the boundary, so I'm out of here. And then I even thought we had time to get Drake back out and spike the ball, even though the, the um, field goal team was out there, but we didn't. So it's, uh, when, it, when it doesn't get you beat, those things are great that they happen because you don't use it much and you practice it in practice. And, and that will be a great thing for us to talk about tomorrow. Uh, that we make sure if we need it in the next three weeks, I can assure you it will happen better. And you didn't manage to cock the clock well on defense. We, we, had, we <laughs> had done everything perfectly until we didn't. Mac, uh, Tayon was ruled out right before the game. What point of the week did, did he get hurt? Uh, he, he was probably Thursday when we realized he wasn't going to play, so that made us really thin. Um, and the same with Legend. Uh, he didn't play because of a... a I guess lower body. Um, so we're, we're thin. I mean, we had Caleb Cost out there in the fourth quarter playing corner. And uh, Gene would make a call and Charlton would say, hmm, he can't do that. He, hadn't, he wasn't in that meeting. Uh, nope, nope, don't call that. He can't do that either. And Gene finally said once, what can I call? Let's get it down to something I can do. But I, I was really proud. Normally you put in the young ones and you stink. And they played really good defense. They played hard. They kept people in front of them. So I was, I was proud of them. Got time for one more, unless we're good. What's the deal with this team and the penalties that wipe out touchdowns? Yeah, I'll, I'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> okay. I'll just say when a, a flag is thrown, when a guy is uh, like the Georgia Tech game last year, when a guy is 40 yards down the field, it probably didn't affect the play. I'll just say that. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs>